Hi everyone and welcome to our week 3 Python tutorial. In this week we discussed marginal and multi-level modeling and also clustered data. Today we'll be going through our NHINS case study and discussing these topics in more detail. It is recommended that you walk through this notebook on your own, reading each of the individual sections because this is one of the more uh, dense topics that we have in this course and in the entire uh, Python uh, statistics with Python specialization. So what I'll be doing today is I'll kind of be going over uh, the high level, what we're discussing in each section, I can kind of give you a little bit more context and kind of ease you into these topics um, as they are um, some of the more um, uh, heavy material that we have in our courses. Okay, so to start, you know, we have our multi-level and uh, marginal modern case study with NHANES, um, and like we always do, we import our libraries. Um, but one of the topics that we uh, have discussed in this week is the concept of dependent um, and a multi-level structure in um, uh, like survey studies, for example, and NHANES data uh, being a survey um, of you know people and different characteristics about them smokers not smokers ages um, their BMI stuff like that there is uh, potential for these people to be um, related to each other in some facet so for example the when we say multi-level structure it means that you know these people could have some inner relation to each other so what happens a lot of the times when we're doing uh, sampling surveys from different, say, like geo locations, um, some people from the same town might be, um, you know, more likely to be the same or s more similar to another person in that town than, say, like somewhere else uh, in the country. So we want to consider, you know, the fact that these people could be correlated to each other in some facet. So what these uh, marginal level and multi level models do is they account for that uh, grouping. So I kind of covered up uh, a little bit about you know what clustered data is and you know when it could really occur, especially in different surveys. Um, but yeah, just to keep that in mind that um, when we have clusters of people or groups that we've done in our in our survey designs, it's more likely that those people are related to each other, more like each other than you know a person in one group is related to a person in another group. So if we want to talk about you know the clustering structure in NHANES, um, it's it is very complex. Um, but luckily, um, those that were carrying out this study included uh, identifiers for um, different groups, and these were um, SDM VSTRA and SDM VPSU, which were identifiers for when they were um, you know surveying people from different counties um, or similar counties. And what we do here is we actually just create this new column called a group. Um, so we, um, based off of these two values for each observation, we specify which group a person was in. And then what we can do here is we can look at interclass correlation. And we use this by using generalized estimated equations, or a GEE. Um, and basically what we want to do is we want to look at if um, observations in a uh, group and we specify in our formula uh, group right here, if two observations in this same group seem to be correlated or if you know, they're, they are you know, extremely similar in comparison to you know, the, the cl other clusters. Um, so what we're doing here is we're simply just looking at symbolic blood pressure um, and that's what we denote in our formula. If we just include one, that just means only have the intercepts, so no actual covariates in our formula. And you can see our output, the correlation between two observations in the same cluster is 0 0.03. While it, you know, it is small, um, as we've noted here, um, it is not actually negligible. And what we do is we actually do something similar, but we include you know, more variables this time around. So we'll actually include symbolic blood pressure, age, body mass index, if they're smoker, non-smoker, and also their group. Um, so when we look at all of these different, um, you know, variables in the same cluster, we can see that there is interrelation between or some correlation between two observations in the same cluster for each of these different um, observations. And I do want to point out when we look at SDM VSTRA, 
um, the correlation is going to be extremely high because we used SDM VSTRA um, to actually calculate the um, indicator for their group. So it's likely that a lot of our observations in each cluster is going to have the same um, you know, value for SDM VSTRA. So I hope that gives you a general idea of you know, how we kind of would go about looking for uh, correlation between two observations in uh, the same cluster. Okay, now that we've kind of discussed um, cluster data, we can go take it a little bit further and talk about marginal uh, linear models with this dependent uh, you know, cluster data structure. So um, what we can do here is we can actually use marginal linear models using um, generalized estimated equations to handle this independent data like we did above. And we can fit it um, to suggest you know, stronger um, you know, uh, regression coefficients. So what we can do here is we can compare um, the two outputs um, of a regular least squares, uh, ordinary least squares model um, with our GEE model. And out here we've outputted, you know, the coefficients, the standard errors um, of each. And you can see there is some variance in terms of what these coefficients are. Um, so it, it is show that it is um, maybe a good idea when you have this multi-level structure in your data to use something like a generalized estimated equation um, for your model. Also, one thing I want to note is that the, in the generalized estimated equation, the standard error is generally larger. And this is due to the fact that we know that there is some dependence um, on other uh, variables. So because there's dependence, there is some uh, you know, additional variability in terms of what the, um, the actual like, true value for these coefficients are um, because of that additional uncertainty. Um, so basically what the GE does is it gives you more of a, a lenient view of, um, of the data, whereas the ordinary least squares is subject to actually um, being too strict in terms of what they create their parameters to be, um, where you may want to include you know, a little bit more buffer when you have this dependent uh, clustered data structure. Now that we've done marginal uh, linear regression, we can do the same with marginal logistic regression. Um, so as you've seen in week two, um, when we use the education variable, we replace it with uh, uh, strings and different, so we make it a categorical variable rather than uh, numeric. And we can fit our basic logistic regression model using GLM and the family set to binomial. And so what we do here is we use age, gender, and also level of education to, uh, to model or regret, we regress uh, smoking on these values. And we do the same with uh, GEE, specify the family as binomial. And we can see that we have you know, a similar thing here where our standard error of our generally estimated equation is larger. Um, but it may be, you know, few of you to consider the fact that you might have clustered um, data or dependent outcomes. So using a general estimate equation would account for this. And just as an overview, um, these three bullet points are pretty important here. So GEE gives us insight into the dependent structure of the data. It uses the dependent structure to obtain meaningful standard errors of these estimated model parameters and the dependent structure to estimate the model parameters you know, more accurately. And lastly, the last thing I'm going to discuss in this uh, video is uh, multi-level models. Um, so as you uh, know, if you've read through this, multi-level modeling is a pretty vast topic um, and pretty advanced. Um, and we don't have uh, you know, enough time really to discuss it and include it in this course. Um, but I would suggest, you know, if you feel free, if you're interested, just definitely check them out and um, work with them a little bit on your own. Um, so what multi-level models essentially do is it is uh, expressed in terms of random effects. Um, and what random effects are is essentially um, underpinned, um, you know, influence that uh, variables might have on each other. So it's not necessarily observed, um, but it can be inferred um, through our data. And that's essentially what these uh, models do. Um, and so this notebook does include 
um, some thorough um, information and code regarding multi-level uh, models. So I would include that you kind of go through this, um, look at how we talk, think about predicted random effects, also random slopes. And that's going to do it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.